let's look at the remind ourselves of the state of the race if that's how you, we want to call it. There are 10 currently in phase three. That's the large number of where you have lots and lots and lots of, uh, of participants. AstraZeneca paused and has resumed its trial in the UK elsewhere, but not the US. Still waiting on US approval to resume. Johnson & Johnson has now pressed the pause button too, and the trial for Eli Lilly's antibody treatment is also paused. The Johnson & Johnson, the J&J poll, took place after one of those participants got seriously ill. We don't know whether the participant had been given the vaccine or the placebo. But I spoke to the chief financial officer of Johnson & Johnson, who made it clear how serious they were taking the situation. It's not uncommon, as I understand from the scientific community, to experience uh, unexpected adverse events. And when we have those, we have protocols in place to make sure that they're thoroughly investigated by an independent drug safety monitoring board. Uh, that's critically important that we get them the information about this one individual. Uh, we don't know even at this point whether that individual is in the placebo arm or the vaccinated arm. Uh, and we just have to do a little bit more diligence through the independent uh, external panel before we can make any conclusive decisions going forward. We've had some experience with the AstraZeneca yes. case, of course, and the Oxford case in the UK. In that case, they were able to restart the test relatively quickly, or at least the, uh, the trial in the UK. But the US hasn't yet. The FDA has been far slower to approve the restarting in the United States. So with that in mind, would you only restart your test when the US regulator, the FDA, says it's OK? Or are you also bound by others? You know, Richard, I think we're going to see what the assessment is from the uh, um, Drug Safety Monitoring Board and then make our decision accordingly. I think to say we're going to start here or there at this point in time would be very, very premature. Our goal, though, is 125 sites uh, up and running in five different countries. That's what we'd like to see, because uh, that will get us to the 60,000 criteria that we endeavor to study for this vaccine candidate. The question that everybody asks, and uh, you, you, know, you give the best answer you can, um, even allowing for this blip in the trials, what's your time scale? We're still looking at the first quarter of next year, Richard. Uh, you know, if, if uh, all goes well with the uh, independent um, panel here, we could be back up and running in a couple of days. I don't want to give a, uh, a projection on that timeline, of course. We're going to let the science dictate here. But I would hope the public would be reassured, as there's a lot of rhetoric out there, that we uh, at Johnson & Johnson, and I, I think I speak for the industry here, we're following the highest uh, standards with respect to scientific, medical, and ethical protocols that are available to us. We're not going to waver from that. Uh, and that's what's important in this case. 